How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. And if you're a complete beginner and you're wondering how you can host a website and just start your own website, of course, you're going to need a place to host your website by choosing a web hosting provider. And I'll get into all the details. I've got two web hosting providers, two of the best, uh, which is going to be Hostinger and Bluehost. So, of course, before we begin, if you guys are interested in any of these web hosting providers, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn more about them. Now, there are two ways to host a website. You can either pay someone else to do it for you or do it yourself. Or, to put it more technically, you can use a hosting platform or host locally. Now, if you prefer to get somebody else to do it for you, you can go with Bluehost. They do have these kinds of services. But if you'd like to do it yourself, which is something that's really not hard at all, and the learning curve is really almost non-existent, honestly, especially with so many automations that you can get with Hostinger, uh, especially that you do get access to the Zyro website builder, and it makes things just so much easier. You can just pick a template and fill out the text, switch out the uh, images and you're good to go. Now, of course, in order to host a website with a provider, you need to consider four things or four steps rather. The first is compare web hosting companies. And I have two of the best web hosting companies to compare today. Again, Bluehost and Hostinger. Uh, second step is you need to choose a web hosting company. The third step is choosing a web hosting plan. And the fourth step is register a domain name. Now let's talk about the first step, which is comparing hosting companies. Now a hosting platform is a company that takes care of hosting for you in exchange for a monthly fee. The provider houses your website's data and manages the demands of its traffic. They are cheap, consistent, and crucially, they take care of the technical considerations, and there are dozens of hosting platforms out there, if not hundreds. And of course, the first step to hosting your website is comparing providers. Size up the options and see which ones align with your technical requirements and your budget. And to help you along, I've been using these two web hosting providers, and you know, whether you're looking for something that is super cheap and offers a lot of value, um, or looking for something that's maybe a little bit more expensive, such as Bluehost, you can go with either one of these and you'll find a lot of value. Now, what I would recommend to most of you guys, if you're beginners, I would recommend that you go with Hostinger since it does offer a very cheap web hosting plan, especially with the single shared hosting plan right here. And you get so many benefits compared to um, Bluehost right here. If we were to compare actually, You'll notice here that it's a little bit more expensive. That's number one. Number two is that you don't get as much storage as you do get with Hostinger. And overall, you get more benefits and more features with Hostinger compared to Bluehost. Uh, though with Bluehost, admittedly, you do get better customer support, especially since they have phone support. So that is very important. Um, but, you know, Again, the live chat support and the email support of Hostinger, they are super reliable, very responsive, and incredibly helpful and knowledgeable. It's their job at the end of the day, and they won't let you down. So there are a few things that you want to watch out for when you're choosing a web hosting company, when you're comparing, of course. Um, so you want to check the uptime. So uptime is, of course, essential for web hosting. And if people can't access your site at all times, all the great features in the world won't amount to nothing. And no one can offer 100% uptime, but anything less than 97 or 98% should be avoided. And with regards to uptime, both of these companies have over 99% uptime. So you're good to go with whichever one you choose. Another thing you want to consider is support. And both of these have really, really good support, except the difference here is that um, Bluehost has phone support while Hostinger does not have phone support. Uh, you also want to consider the free domain name because as you can tell here, so the single shared hosting plan won't give you a free domain name, but if you actually upgrade to the premium shared hosting plan, you will get a free domain name. So. You know, you want to keep stuff like that in mind. Whereas with Bluehost, if you go down here, you do get the free domain name even with the basic plan. But the basic plan itself is about as expensive as the premium plan of Hostinger. So depending on what you're looking for and your plans, you know, your website, the size of your website, 
so on and so forth, you want to go with one over the other. But as you can tell, for example, here, the premium shared web hosting plan, which is four cents more expensive per month than the Bluehost basic plan, will give you 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, whereas the Bluehost one will give you 10 gigabytes of SSD storage. Uh, so yeah, it really depends on what you're looking for at the end of the day. I just typically like to recommend Hostinger because it's a whole lot of value for the money. Uh, so that is also something that you wanna consider besides the domain name is the value for money. And in this category, Hostinger is certainly the winner. And of course, you want to consider features because there's more to web hosting than just hosting from site backups to WordPress integration. There are a whole lot of features that separate the lower tier hosts from the pros. And of course, another thing you want to consider is the variety of hosting types available because there are various types, which I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, and some providers offer more of them than others. So you want to make sure that in case you want to scale up your website later, there is an option for you to do that if you want to change up your hosting plan. And speaking of hosting plans, once you have a host platform you like the look of, let's say Hostinger, you still need to narrow your decision down to a plan. And there are numerous types of hosting. You've got shared web hosting, cloud web hosting, VPS hosting, and dedicated hosting. And let's start with the definitions here, starting with the shared web hosting. Now, shared web hosting is when multiple sites are stored on one server. So your site will be one of those sites sharing a server uh, with other sites. And sharing the space is more cost effective, which is why it's very cheap, but it also means resources are finite. And this would be for small and starter sites with modest technical demands. If in doubt, start here and upgrade as your site demands grow. Now, the second type of hosting is cloud hosting. And cloud hosting is when your site is powered by multiple servers. It's a much more flexible system than shared hosting, because if one server goes down, another picks up the slack. And this is for sites starting to outgrow their humble origins. Um, cloud hosting copes far better, of course, with traffic spikes than shared does. It's a good half measure if you want to scale up, but not to take the plunge of dedicated hosting. The third type of hosting is VPS hosting. And VPS hosting is a halfway point between shared and dedicated servers. And you share server space with other sites, but a section of it is entirely yours. And this is a step beyond cloud because this mixes flexibility, scalability, and power. These plans are great if you've outgrown shared hosting, but are still not yet ready to go to dedicated. The difference between Bluehost and uh, Hostinger with VPS hosting is that uh, Hostinger will actually give you the option to go all the way down to VPS1 or scale your way all the way up to VPS8, which is gonna be pretty expensive, but you're getting a whole lot of resources. And when you compare the resources that you get here with what you get with the ultimate and most expensive VPS plan with Bluehost, then you'll notice the difference. Now, if you're looking for dedicated hosting, this is where you are the sole tenant of a server. Of course, you're going to be paying a whole lot more money for this one because you'll get all those resources to yourself. This exclusivity costs, but it's worth it if your site is resource intensive. And of course, this is for the big leagues. If you're just starting out, you don't want to get anywhere near this tier of plan. Not yet anyways. And of course, you can probably do just fine with a VPS plan, uh, a dedicated plan is just meant for those that are looking to, well, start a huge website, okay? And if dedicated hosting is what you're looking for, you're gonna find it with Bluehost because unfortunately, Hostinger does not offer that. Okay, now the final step is of course, you need to get a domain name, which we spoke about a little earlier, which is of course your digital address. Now, nearly every web hosting provider includes domain name registration in its sign up process. Sometimes it's included as a freebie in the plan you've chosen. With Bluehost, for example, all of the plans will give you a free domain name. Uh, but with Hostinger, considering that you do have the option to, you know, get something that's super cheap, 
uh, you don't really get the free domain name but if you just pay one more dollar per month you will be able to get that free domain name uh, so yeah you want to keep that in mind and a good domain name is simple easy to remember and usually number free don't feel bound to the .com convention either more and more sites are playing around the atypical top-level domains like .xyz or .co. So long as it fits with your brand, you'll be fine. If you already have a domain name, it's simply a case of attaching it to your new server. Many hosting platforms include this in the sign-up process and handle it for you, so no need to worry about that. But it's worth mentioning that you do not lose your domain name if you change web hosting companies. They are different services. If you change web hosts, you can always take your domain with you. So keep that in mind. And that's pretty much it for this video. Follow these steps and you should have a good idea, you know, of what you want to go for. Take a good look at these plans, what you get with them, compare it to other web hosting providers. Again, I brought up two of the best web hosting providers that you can uh, look for in the business, Bluehost and Hostinger. Really, really, really good services and I highly recommend them. And again, if you guys are interested in any of these web hosting providers, you'll find these pricing discounts in the description down below, which will drop the price even more and you will find links to full reviews if you'd like to learn more about these web hosting providers and of course you want to keep in mind what is the website for you know is it going to be a big website is it going to be a blog is it going to be for something that has to do with e-commerce if you're starting an online store you know maybe it's not an online store and it's just a kind of a portfolio website then just a single shared hosting plan will do just fine and if you don't have a domain you can go with the premium one in order to get a free domain so on and so forth you want to take these things in mind and you know consider what does your website require what kind of resources are you looking for here and then you can go ahead and claim these resources by choosing a, a suitable plan besides that comment below if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer all of them like and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with everything web hosting thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one have a wonderful day